Has Creality finally figured out what enthusiasts want in a 3D printer out of the box? Let's take a look at their latest CR10 Smart Pro and find out. To be clear, this printer was purchased with my own money from one of Creality's resellers. This wasn't given to me. This isn't a sponsored review or anything like that. What you're going to get from me is my honest opinion and review of this thing. Let's start with what might be the hallmark feature of this printer, and that's the print head that Creality developed for it. It includes a direct drive extruder, an all metal hot end, as well as auto bed leveling, all in one unit that's pretty easy to install on the printer. As a result, you'll see that the spool is mounted a little bit differently uh, with a feed going straight down and a filament runout sensor right up top. One of my favorite benefits of a direct drive extruder means no more dealing with the fittings for Bowden tubes. Bowden tubes on Creality printers have been a consumable for me, wearing away at their connection points and often being a place where filament can clog or bind up. Additionally, filament changes are much, much easier. Instead of pushing through over a foot of Bowden tube to get to the hot end, that's all you get, and you're wasting so much less filament. Normally you're snipping off over a foot here, but now just this little bit comes off and you can go ahead and reuse your filament if you even have to trim that. Switching out and loading a new spool of filament, just as easy as removing the old one. Just hang it on up right here, pass it right through our filament runout sensor, which is much easier than other Creality filament runout sensors that I've dealt with. They often get stuck. Pull our filament in, and again, I'm, I don't even really need to trim this. Just pull our lever, push it into the hot end, and manually push it through until you see your new color. And that's it. Not really dealing with much purge issues there or anything. And by the way, this is my current favorite filament, and this is Polymaker Polyterra Army Red Matte PLA. It's a little bit more ductile than most PLA. The layer adhesion is really great, and the prints look awesome coming off of it. Additionally, this printer includes a spring steel PEI bed, small full color LCD, as well as a built in Creality box, which is their connected cloud printer control system that's built into this printer, which we'll get into in a little bit. This printer also includes a couple features that I think are noteworthy, but they don't really talk about a whole lot. You'll notice instead of using typical off the shelf extrusions, they seem to be using some more custom extrusions now for their frame, as well as these support brackets, unlike the CR10S Pro V1 and V2, which were a little bit less rigid, but still good printers. Creality's naming schemes and product offerings, total mess. Unlike a lot of printers at this price point, this one includes a full size SD card slot, which I think is something that a lot of people have been asking for for a while. Dealing with those little micro SD cards, they get lost, broken, whatever. Having a full size card is a nice little benefit. Also note that unlike some of the other CR10 models, this has dual extrusions for our Y axis, which allows it to run a little bit more true and smoothly as well as these nice anodized aluminum wheels for bed leveling adjustment. It's worth noting that some of the other knobs and this drawer pull here for some of your tools are just plastic with a metallic red coating. One nice small feature I noticed on this that I haven't seen on other Creality printers is each Z-axis lead screw is connected with a belt, keeping them from going out of sync and getting your gantry out of level. Creality seems to have stepped up their game for documentation as well, including a full color manual with your printer. Assembly is straightforward and not unlike most other Creality printers. You just need to install the gantry here with a total of four screws, four more for these rear supports, and three for the print head assembly. Additionally, you also need to tighten your belts, but they give you these nice thumb screws to tension them up with. Unfortunately, after assembly, we had some problems right away. The set screw that retains the heat brake, as well as the two screws that hold the hot end in at the bottom, all became loose and fell out during one of my prints, causing the hot end to crash into the bed and scratch up the build plate. Fortunately, the entire print head assembly as well as the build plate are gonna be replaced under warranty. Let's go ahead and remove this print so I can show you. One nice thing with a PEI bed, things are pretty easy to remove, though I find that I still need to use some glue stick every once in a while. You'll see that there's a few scratches on our bed right along where our purge line is, as well as back here, and that's from that hot end crashing in and dragging right along the bed. In addition to tensioning your belts, and with the issues that I've had, checking to make sure that your hot end is all tightened up from the factory, be sure to tighten all of the V-wheels on the Y, X, and Z axis of your printer. The print quality has been exceptional since I got it dialed in. This is probably my favorite model that I've printed on it so far, and that's this Land Speeder kit card with lots of neat little details and assembles. And I'll link the Thingiverse file for this in the description below. This is printed at a 0.16 layer height, pretty low infill. And you'll notice I got a really, really great first layer except for a little bit of glue stick witness marks, but other than that, it looks great. 
this uh, Mando's Naboo Starfighter. Printed out okay, and this is before I got the belts tensioned in just right, so you'll notice just a little bit of layer differences there. Not too bad, nothing too crazy there. Once I got it dialed in, this low poly chair miner came out great with minimal variance in our layer lines. I think one sign of a good printer, or at least a well dialed one, is print at even its lowest quality setting is going to look pretty good because the layers are very consistent. We'll start on the bottom and we'll see that our first layer was very smooth and the textured PEI sheet gave it a nice little kind of finished texture there. I kind of like that. You notice the layers here are very, very consistent and you can see how the light reflects off of them very consistently as well. And even inside, we don't see any stringing, pilling, or any kind of other print issues that would indicate a poorly set up printer. One quick note about this print bed is that it does require a pretty even ambient temperature, which unfortunately, ideally, would mean putting an enclosure around this printer, but it's just a little too big for that. If the ambient air temperature is a little too cold, your parts are going to warp and sometimes come right off the bed in the middle of a print. So I've tried printing with brims and glue and that doesn't really help it, but what really helped was just turning on a space heater down here and letting it run. It's expensive, it's not really ideal, but my prints are coming out great now. I expect in the warmer months that this is not going to be an issue. The integrated Creality box feature gives you a sort of octoprint-like access to your printer where you can upload G-code remotely, you can look at a camera remotely, you can control your printer remotely, but it's all through Creality's own app, which I don't think is that great. And I'll show you some captures here. It's, it has some ads, it's not well laid out, and it just screams spyware. I don't know, know what's going on. I haven't done any Wireshark captures or anything like this, but I don't know that I really trust the traffic coming from this thing. Additionally, it also came with a webcam, which is hanging out right over here. And it's just a cheapy little sort of webcam that you can use. It connects directly to the side of the printer here and you can monitor your prints remotely anywhere with an internet connection, which is really cool. But the camera itself is pretty low quality and uh, I don't know where to mount it. There's no good place for it. They give you this little cheapy like dollar store tripod, but it's just junk. Nobody wants that. I've tried to kind of clip this on up here and it sort of stays, but it eventually falls down and there's no good place to put the wire. So if I was Creality, I'd probably find a better way to mount this or uh, something built into the gantry that would hold it. I might try some VHB tape or something like that and see what I can do. Not really having a shop or content studio to work out of anymore. I've kind of set this up at home. And I'll be making some more videos and putting out some more content soon. I have what I think is a pretty cool project that I'm excited to share when it's ready to go in a couple weeks here. In addition, some of my friends that I've been making content with for the last couple years, we're going to keep doing that together at some point. We'll get together and we'll make some content. But in the meantime, you can check out Graz, and he'll be somewhere on the screen I here. like Turtle! And you can check out Andrew too, and they're going to be both linked in the description. Uh, they're both putting out some fun content. And don't forget to check out Making Fun on Netflix, which my friend Graz is going to be on. And you should be seeing that right around the time this goes out on Netflix. So do I think you should buy this printer? Well, it's kind of a maybe. It's a little expensive. It's $700. It costs way more than most of Creality's other product line. And if you're familiar with the pricing on the Ender 3 and that whole series, which there's like five or six models of now, don't ask why. Um, it's, it's a bit of a tough ask. At $700, I think you get a lot of printer here and you're getting more than you would get from any other company at that price. Pretty hard to argue with. If you want to spend a little bit less, I recommend the Creality Ender 3 S1, which offers almost everything that this does uh, without the spring steel PEI sheet. You get more of like a build tack surface that's magnetic there instead of the, the PEI, but otherwise pretty much the same platform. Though it's been around for a little while, I think 3D printing for consumers is still an emerging technology. And if you're willing to do a little bit of tinkering, I think anybody can pick this up and do it. So let me know in the comments what printer you have or the one that you're going to consider buying, and let me know how it goes for you. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.